Hey, Motor Man here. Listen, this week we're going to talk about the question I get more than any other, and that is, I'm a beginner, what bike should I buy? Or, I've just gotten back into riding, can I get a 900-pound motorcycle? And that's what we're going to talk about, and i got a lot of answers for you. We're going to take a ride, I'm going to talk to you, and I'm going to tell you what my view is on it. Yours may differ, but I would hope that you take my advice, especially on this particular subject. Before we go any further, though, I want to tell you something about if you took my advice and got one of these Harley-Davidson police bikes, and you wanted to take the rack off, you now no longer have a place to keep your license plate. So, you have a couple of choices. This you can get from Harley Davidson. This comes with the Tour Pack Quick Release Package, or it can be bought separately. I just couldn't find the part number in their catalog, but you can call and ask. This mounts underneath the brake light, and it allows you to put the plate here, and the light that's on the top here will shine on the plate, so you'll be legal. The other option is this. This is from V Factor. That's the company who makes this. Kiriakin also makes it. The odd thing is, if you look up on JMP Cycles or Dennis Kirk or any of those places, it says that this will not fit 214 and later motorcycles. Obviously, it fits perfectly. Not only that, but it comes with three wires. This is the old one that was on there. This came with two because there was no license plate. So you got the signal lights, and then this comes with a third one that plugs in. The plug is already there for the license plate light. So this bolts right on. I paid 173 bucks for it. In fact, the day I got it, I put it on, and I went to do a review on it because it works so well, and to let people know that it's going to fit your 2020 motorcycle. And I saw the price was down $155. So I called Dennis Kirk. I said, hey, I just got it today. I paid $173. Now it's $155. I think you should credit me back to $20. He said, uh, no. So you make your own choice whether you want to purchase from them or someplace else. But now let's get on the bike and go for a ride, and we'll talk all about this particular subject. Well, all right then, as I said, one of the most frequently asked questions that I get from uh, people are, what bike should I buy uh, if I'm a beginner or a re-entry rider? Um, the first thing I tell those people, if you're a re-entry rider and you already have your motorcycle license, but you haven't ridden in 15 or 20 years, take the beginner course again. Make sure make sure that you've got those basics down that's what they're going to teach you in the beginner course and if you take that course and it's you know you breeze through it you maybe get one or two things wrong but pretty much it's you find it extremely easy and and even uh, almost insulting to your intelligence well then you might be ready for a full-size motorcycle as long as when you get that full-size heavyweight bike, whether it be a Harley-Davidson Road King or an Ultra or Goldwing, you're prepared to go out in the parking lot and spend at least three or four hours practicing your skills prior to going out on the street and, of course, prior to putting a passenger on the back. Now, if you're a brand new rider, never ridden before, you take the uh, basic course, which even in the in the states that don't require you to do so, I urge you to take that beginner course. It's going to help you. You get the basics down. If you struggled at all through that course, if you felt like you just barely made it through, I wouldn't get anything bigger than a 250 motorcycle. And the reason I say 250 is, is it's not so much the engine size it's the weight of the motorcycle that intimidates people. So most uh, 250cc bikes, they probably weigh somewhere around 350, 375 pounds, and it would be the closest thing to what you're riding in the beginner course. Now some of them have 125cc uh, Kawasaki's, and yeah, those are easy to learn on bikes. If you had a problem with one of those, <laughs> you might wanna, might wanna start with a used 125cc Kawasaki or even a Grom or one of those little uh, almost mini bikes that they have out now. You can have a lot of fun with them and you can get some skills if, if you're willing to go out in the park and a lot of practice. What you don't want to do is if you struggled in that beginner course is get any kind of bike and go right out on the road. Don't do it. Go to a parking lot, practice what they taught you, practice braking, from various speeds, starting at probably 10 miles an hour 
and working up to about 40, maybe even 50 miles an hour. You need to be able to stop that motorcycle quickly in a parking lot before you have to stop it quickly out on the street. Now once you've done that, well, let's say you're the average person, you, you didn't really have a, a problem, you passed the course and you know it wasn't you, you didn't find it difficult or anything, you might be ready for a mid-sized motorcycle. Now there are a lot of mid-sized bikes around. And if you're planning on one day getting a, a full-size touring motorcycle, you want to look for a, a cruiser type bike. The only problem with the mid-sized cruiser motorcycles such as a Suzuki C50 which is an 800 cc bike or the Kawasaki 900 classic which is also an excellent mid-size bike the only problem with them is you can't get ABS I was hoping that at least this year that uh, Kawasaki and well actually all the manufacturers would come out with ABS on all their motorcycles I believe in Europe Anything over, I think it's a 150 cc, it's mandatory to have ABS. ABS brakes will save your life. That is where most people make a serious mistake, is braking hard, locking up the rear tire and sliding on the ground, which cannot happen if you've got an ABS equipped motorcycle. As long as the bike is straight up, you can clamp down on those brakes as hard as you want, and the bike is not gonna slide on the ground. That's what they're for. So taking that into consideration that you, you can't get that uh, ABS on, on say the Suzuki C50, which is a, a very easy bike to ride, like I said, midsize or the Kawasaki 900. Get a bike with ABS, the Kawasaki 650S is an excellent choice. Now the 650S has a sport bike motor. So it has all kinds of power, more power than you'll ever need. You'll be able to cruise easily on the highway at 70 or 80 miles an hour it handles very well at low speeds where most people seem to have a problem and they're adjustable for the size of the rider they've got different seats and uh, different foot peg configurations and handlebars etc and you want to try them all before you buy the bike and have them put on by the dealer if you're not a handy person so that would be probably the number one choice and there they run somewhere around uh, seventy five hundred dollars I believe with the ABS option and please get that ABS don't get the model without ABS another very good option is from Triumph their Street 900 Bonneville excellent motorcycle could easily take two up on the highway got plenty of power they come standard with the ABS knew they're about uh, 93 uh, $9,300 but you know you could find in fact any of the bikes I mentioned if you find them used obviously you're gonna save a lot of money and the good thing about those mid-sized bikes is if you get tired of it or you feel you need a bigger bike after a year or so you could sell them pretty easily when you start to get on uh, motorcycles uh, I don't know about ten thousand dollars or more yeah, then they start getting a little difficult to sell as a private owner because people generally want to have uh, the bike financed, which most private owners can't do. But if you get one of these bikes, let's say you buy a, a used uh, Kawasaki S650, it's a couple of years old. They've been making that model, I think, for, for at least four or five years now. You could probably pick one up, even if it has high mileage, for four or $5,000 if you look around, do your homework, ride it for a year, and sell it and get almost what you paid for it that's like getting a free ride for a year getting in the practice that you need getting some on-road training and of course I would hope that you go to the parking lot you practice on that bike and then if you want to move up and you want to know if you're ready to move up here's an easy way to tell if you're ready to move up to an eight or nine hundred pound motorcycle if you can complete every one of the exercises I show in my Ride Like a Pro video, the first half of that video, all based on 24 foot turns, if you can complete every one of those exercises with ease, you're ready for any size motorcycle. So if you're moving up from a 550 pound motorcycle to a 900 pound bike, and you already have some skills, you can run through every one of those exercises I show on that video, 
first thing you need to do is set up those exercises again on the big bike spend about two hours in about two hours you should if you're good on the 650 bike in about two hours four hours at the most you should be just as good on the heavyweight bike now I've heard this a lot I heard people say if they come to my class and they've got a you know an ultra or gold wing or whatever heavyweight motorcycle and they, they're having all kinds of problems they tell me yeah with the last bike I had you know I didn't have any problem I was really good on that bike well the, the actual fact is if you didn't have any skills on the bike you had before and it was a smaller bike all your problems are going to be amplified on the bigger bike that's generally the way it is if you were great on that other bike that you had and you could run through every one of the exercises I show, at the very minimum, you should be able to make a 24 foot U-turn on a side street easily. Regardless of what, what size motorcycle you're on. If you can't make a simple U-turn on your mid-sized motorcycle, believe me, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to learn how to do that simple maneuver on a 900 pound motorcycle. So it's always best and always easier, less intimidating to learn the proper techniques on a small motorcycle versus a big motorcycle. You would think that that's just common sense, but I see so many people, even people who've never ridden a bike before, they take the MSF course, the beginner course, and then they go out and buy an Ultra and they're falling all over the place. <laughs> they, can't figure, they can't figure it out. And I'm thinking to myself, you, are you kidding? You just, you, you didn't know how to ride, so you took the beginner course on those little toy bikes, and then you went out and you bought a Goldwing or an Ultra, and you thought that was the smart thing to do? Oh, come on. I, I just got a, an email recently from a guy who says, I haven't been riding in uh, tw 25 or 30 years, and the, the only uh, experience I have is riding a 400cc dirt bike. Should I buy a new Goldwing? Because my wife likes the passenger seat on that. <laughs> I'm thinking, I wrote him back and said, no, that would be the last thing you want to do. Get a mid-size bike, even retake the beginner course. Get the mid-size bike. Don't put your wife on the motorcycle until you're competent when you're riding by yourself. If you could do every exercise by yourself uh, through the Ride Like a Pro course, through all six or seven exercises, then you should practice with your wife on the back. At, in the parking lot, in a controlled area. Don't just take it right out on the road. If you can't handle the bike with her on the back in a controlled conditions in a parking lot, she should not be on that motorcycle out on the street. Her life, to, your passenger's life depends on the rider. And ladies, if you know that your husband's a terrible rider, he's duck walking his bike and his handlebars are shaking, uh, don't get on that bike make him get some training before you get on there and I know it's a lot of fun to ride with your wife and go places and do some touring but have the skills first to do that never get that brand new ultra motorcycle bring it home tell the wife to get on the bike you're gonna be falling down and you know the first time she falls on that bike and she's lost her trust in you she's never gonna have even if she gets back on the bike she's never gonna have that trust that she needs so get your skills first on a small bike mid-sized motorcycle another good choice is the Honda 500 CC with ABS and I think they run about $6,500 that's another minus a bike that you can buy used for about five grand keep it for a year even two years get your skills up and then sell it for what you paid for it of course as long as you don't wreck the bike but the, the whole point of the small bike is to learn your technique and your skills on the smaller lighter motorcycle and then once you get really good on that bike then you could move up with just a couple of hours practice to any size motorcycle that you want sometimes you may find if you buy a, a triumph bonneville that you don't need anything bigger than that you could put bags on that bike it could ride you know i mean i think they do about 120 miles an hour not that you should do it but th that means they're capable of cruising at 70 80 miles an hour with two people plus luggage without being uncomfortable on that bike it's a very upright riding position seats are pretty comfortable you may say to yourself well i've spent uh, eight or nine thousand dollars for this bike and it serves my purposes just fine i don't need to to move up 
just because your friends have bigger bikes you in fact you probably find that the Bonneville is actually faster than most bikes like this so I hope you enjoyed this little talk we had I hope you take this these words of wisdom take them to heart don't be stupid use some common sense and please uh, subscribe give me a thumbs up and uh, click that notification bell till next time keep the shiny side up